Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Now, civilians in Nigeria own as much as 10 times the number of arms collectively owned by our country's security agencies. Several reports put the number of arms owned by security operatives at about half a million, which pales in comparison to the 6 million arms in civilian hands. What's more, the Global Terrorism Index ranks Nigeria as the third most terrorized country in the world. And a security and intelligence expert who has researched on arms proliferation in Nigeria, Kabi Adamu, you know, has been speaking about this particular matter as well. Osawage, this is very shocking. Is I it? mean, about four or about 586, you know, 1,600 firearms owned by the Nigerian security agencies, but firearms that are owned by gunmen and uh, basically in the wrong hands, about 6 million. This is so frightening. Oh, shocking, no. Frightening, yes. Um, and why I would say it's not shocking is because, um, I, I, I mean, if you look at what has happened in the last couple of years, and the ease at which bandits and kidnappers and insurgents have run wild in Nigeria, um, it should tell you that there is a very, very easy market for getting ammunition and arms, arms and ammunition. Um, so it's not shocking in any way. Is it frightening? Absolutely. And, and because um, it, it just tells you every day how easy it is for crimes to be committed, for murders to be mm -hmm. committed, because the weapons are readily available. They're in the black market, they can be purchased, you know, but, you know with a few hundred thousands, I, I have no idea. Um, and they're just there. There's also been allegations of even, you know, members of the, of the security agencies being, you know, some of the people who, you know, help get these things. Uh, you would hear, you know, armchair discussion, discussions, beer parlor discussions, where people would say that, oh, you know, the reason the Nigerian police can't use, you know, um, their bullets so freely is because they can easily purchase new ones in the black market. So there is, there is a lot of these conversations and that don't make it shocking. Very, very frightening. Um, and now also it makes you then ask yourself, who really should be responsible for checkmating the free flow of arms into Nigeria? Is I've been battling with that question this morning, sorry, asking myself who really is to be blamed for this? Because I, I get into conversations with my friends in the DSS and they tell me, you know, arms that they heard about, arms that, they, you know, that, that were seized from armed robbers and they tell me how they caught armed robbers with arms and, you know, they're begging them, telling them that they rented this gun for a particular number of days and if they don't return the gun by that time that they're dead. You heard situations like this, you have arms basically for rents. Yes. Arms for rent in the country. Mm. So someone can just easily, just with the right, wrong contacts, get arms and perpetrate crime. We have, you know, people, we have friends and family members that have, you know, been victims of one chance, so to speak. You know, they get into, into vehicles, you know, commuting to work, and you see somebody who you thought was a, was a passenger pull out a gun, threaten you, take your ATM cards, take all the money on you, hit you with the gun and basically render you, you know, stranded on the streets early morning in Lagos. So I just feel that there's a lot for security agencies to do in Nigeria regarding arms. Because if, you know, first of all, you're having governors, you know, say that people should start carrying arms. I don't advocate that because with the amount of arms you have in the country, if the doors are thrown open for everybody to have arms, we would definitely be in a crisis. Um, yeah, and, and we... we um don't even have conversations on gun laws in Nigeria and how we maybe need to um, adjust or remodify our gun laws, um, you know, here in the country. You know, who, you know, should be um, old enough or sh who should be um, um, able to bear arms in Nigeria? What kind of arms should that person, you know, hold? The president uh, a few weeks ago made statements about, you know, arresting and shooting people who uh, unlawfully are carrying, you know, about AK-47. It's also, you know, a quick reminder, if you see some of the clips of the bandits or the kidnappers or the, you know, insurgents, and you see the type of ammunition that they are wielding, it, you know, it, you can tell that this is, you know, really, really high caliber weapons. Sophisticated weapons. And they weapons. were not made in Aba or made in Kebi State or they were not produced in Nasarawa. These are guns that were brought into the country through, um, you know, the, our borders, to maybe through, um, you know, the, uh, um, um, the shipments. We really have no idea how they come into the country. Um, there is also 
a um, couple of days ago, it was yesterday, there was also you know, um, a, a new story about um, a, you know, an army shipment that was attacked um, that, um, you know, we're still going to try to get verification for that. An army shipment that was attacked that, um, you know, we lost about 28 million naira and some, uh, you know, arms and ammunition. That's also another way with which, you know, they have continued to take these weapons and it has continued to go into the, the, the wrong arms in the country. But also quickly remember, a um, few years ago, 2015, 2016, I believe, there were reports of 600, 800 pump action rifles that were seized by uh, Nigerian security agencies. We don't know what happened to those weapons or where they are today. We have a problem. Nigerians across the country need to understand that we have a big problem with the amount of arms that are freely moving across Nigeria today. Um, Abdusalami Abubakar, um, Kabir Adamu say 6 million. There's a possibility that it may be way higher than 6 million that is, you know, has been mentioned. Um, what are we going to do about it? Is the government, and of course, every, every now and then you hear that the Inspector General of Police gives this new you know, order that everybody who's walking around or who you know, has an unlicensed weapon or a licensed mm -hmm. weapon, uh, those weapons should be you know, seized and people will be arrested. There's, there's been multiple times that they've given those orders. How many times have they been, they've been able to mop up weapons like that? Um, what really are we going to do about checking and finding out how these weapons are coming into Nigeria? Because once again, a lot of them are not produced here. AK-47s are not made here. See, they are all brought in. You see, regarding this arms thing, I don't really think it's rocket science because we're talking about just six million arms in circulation while the army owns all the, the Nigerian security forces own just about 500 and something thousand of that. In the United States, they have just less than 400 million arms, firearms owned by civilians. About 400 million compared to six million in Nigeria. But the fact is that the arms in that country, everything is properly registered, properly documented. If there is a shooting somewhere, they can trace that bullet to the firearm where it was purchased and be, a be able to basically track the shooter. But because we don't even have such laws in the country, everything is in the black market, no regulation. That's why you begin to see things like this. We saw in the papers this morning, people abducted here, abducted there, all armed with weapons. Yeah, but it's you just know, so United shocking. States. The, 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 I feel the Nigerian government, security agencies in Nigeria, totally do not have a grip on what's happening regarding proliferation of arms in the country. And they do need to get that in check. The United States does have its own lapses. It's not every, you know, there's also the black market there where weapons are, so, are bought and sold. There's also, you know, a couple of those, you know, um, um, pistols and. But there's and, definitely and, and, much and, more and regulation and than. Yes, yeah, there's definitely more, here. a lot of it. You know, we, you know once I, you know, again, I said, we don't have. Um, gun laws. We do have some gun laws, you know, that makes, um, you know, um, only 18 year olds and above to be able to purchase weapons. And maybe I think only concealable weapons, you know, concealable weapons can't be purchased. Um, but what we you know our challenge really is, is, you know, where these weapons, the illegal weapons come in from, where is the market? Who is the person that is making you know, money from selling arms to bandits, to insurgents, and to people across the country? And of course, this extends all the way down to the Niger Delta. It extends all the way to you know, Bainway. Um, mm -hmm. The p persons who are you know, moving around with cattle and carrying weapons, where do they buy these weapons from? Who gives them uh, you know, these yeah. guns? Mm -hmm. um, what do we need to do? And how many of our borders, in this period that we've spoken extensively about porous borders, how many of these borders have been closed? How many of these borders have now been properly, are now, you know, being properly manned by security agencies? Customs, immigration, all of them. There's so many of these agencies that just exist. How many of our borders, if you ask, you know, the DG of Customs now, how many of, you know, Nigeria's borders have we successfully closed? I don't know if you would get a great answer or you would get an answer that would, you know, make a lot of sense. Um, good morning to our guest uh, this morning, Kabir Adamu. Uh, good morning, um, guys. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're, we're, Thank you for having me. Yeah, we're speaking, you know, with regards to the six million illegal uh, weapons that are, you know, in the Nigerian space currently. Um, quickly share with us how frightening this should be, seeing figures like that. Um, ex extremely frightening, especially if you put it side by side with the weapons that are in the hands of uh, the armed forces, all the about uh, 18 or thereabout 
security agencies that have the constitutional mandate to bear weapons. The most conservative uh, and accurate figure that is out there puts that figure at around 580,000, just below 600,000. So if you compare that with 6 million, um, you can understand why it's almost impossible for our security agencies to address the challenge of um, weapons proliferation. Uh, that's a ratio of almost one to four or, the, or, or thereabout. So it means for every one uh, armed security agent is having to deal with um, at least four non-state actors that have weapons, and in most instances that are of superior quality to the weapons that the security agencies have. Now, mind you, that six million is the most conservative figure. There are figures out there, including by the UN, that is saying that we have non-state actors in possession of between at least um, 10 million to 35 million small arms and light weapons. And this also includes the locally made weapons that we see um, on the streets here in Nigeria, used by petty, petty criminals. So um, Nigeria has uh, three major status, if I will call, of weapon uh, proliferation. It's a transit country, it's a destination country, and it's also um, a supply country. So we have a local manufacturing um, industry, as it were, for uh, Ill illegal weapons, including small arms and light weapons. The most frightening one for me is the fabrication of what looks like an AK-47 locally produced, including the ammunition, in several places in Nigeria. You just mentioned some, some, some facts about Nigeria. Would you say that's why you know, Nigeria has the highest number of Ill illicit drugs or illegal drugs, I beg your pardon, illegal arms, firearms in Africa? Of all the arms in Africa, Nigeria has the most of them. Would you say that you know, those are the reasons why? Uh, yes, a couple of reasons. Uh, like I said, Nigeria is a destination country, it's a transit country, it's also a supply uh, country. Um, what the reasons could be because of our population. It could be, uh, of course, because of the various conflict uh, zones within Nigeria. Uh, there are insurgencies, there are insurrections, there are criminals. And then the one that worries me uh, most are two that we really speak of. The militias, both ethnic and um, sometimes social, unfortunately, and religious, that are seeking to weaponize their uh, armed uh, wings an example is the indigenous people of Biafra. Um, you know, allegedly, whether it's true or not, the Islamic movement in, in Nigeria. Uh, there are several other groups that have, uh, quote and unquote, armed wings and that are seeking to arm this. Now, there are also ethnic militias, and uh, for the benefit of the listener, there are reports that have documented the existence of these ethnic militias. The most common one is what, uh, what the media has sort of popularized, the so-called Fulani ethnic militias. But almost every indigenous group in Nigeria have these ethnic militias. And like I said, these are documented reports. They arm these ethnic militias. And then we also have um, state authorities. Now, uh, under the constitution, only the federal government um, has the exclusive sort of right for uh, uh, you know, the armed forces, almost all the 18 that can bear arms are under the federal government. However, the state governors, unfortunately, have also, in one way or the other, armed uh, what I would call state-level security arrangements. So if you go to, as an example, the recently formed Amotekun, they have been armed, even though you know the constitution says they shouldn't be, the, the law that set them up. If you go to places like Kanu, the Hizba, they also have their arms. Likewise, in places like Zamfara, uh, they have their arms. And then uh, not too long ago, I'm sure you covered this, uh, one of the governors in the Southwest, I can't recall the exact governor now, when during in his handover notes, uh, he actually reported to the um, Office of the National Security Advisor that he had secured arms over a, a certain period in the past yes. and documented those arms. When we saw those arms, uh, it was frightening because those arms should have been really in one of the um, 18 security uh, agencies that have the mandate to bear arms. So apart from the ethnic militias, the religious militias, you also have state-level initiatives that uh, are bearing these arms. And the challenge for me is not that they are bearing the arms, but what, where do they keep these arms? 
um, the sanctity, the integrity of the armory, where they keep these arms, and then what kind of um, control measures do we have within these um, armories to prevent the release of these armories for illegal uh, activities? Okay. It's documented again by several, you know, um, studies that sometimes security agencies, whether at the federal level or state level, do actually supply these arms to criminals. Mm. Unfortunately, Mr. I, think you, I think you were speaking about Governor Amosu. Um, um, and a thousand AK-47 rifles um, in that report. Exactly, it's a, a seven senator now. Yeah. Go ahead. So, really, I know how again before you joined, we're, we're debating, you know, who really is to blame for all of this? Because definitely, there's an agency of government that should be checking, you know, the source of these arms and how they basically come into the country. Who's to blame for this? And what's the role of the customs in all of this? Uh, well, uh, like I said, um, Nigeria is both a supply, a destination, and um, you know for for this for this weapon. So, if you the question of who is to blame is the whole machinery of government, unfortunately. And I say this with all sense of responsibility, um, both the legislative, the executive, and to an extent the judicial arm of government are to are to blame. And we Nigerians. Um, when I mentioned earlier on that there are ethnic militias, it's not the government that uh, is behind those ethnic militias. It's you and I, Nigerians, that uh, the farmer had a conflict is between communities and the people who armed these this, uh, militias are perhaps driving an interest that is community-based or sometimes religious-based or even econ economic-based. So frankly, it's the whole gamut of society as well as the whole of government that is to blame. I know that there are uh, laws that should have been ratified, international, you know, sort of laws that we have agreed to that we did, we had, we haven't ratified. And for ratification, it's a function of the legislature. Uh, ECO, as an example, has recommended the setting up of commissions to mop up the small arms and light weapons. Almost all the, um, uh, you know, 15 member states of the ECO have set up this commission. If I'm right, it's only Nigeria, either. Gambia or Guinea-Bissau that is yet to set up that. Right. And Gambia, the last Gambia. time I checked, the other country had actually set it up. It's also, it, it seems it's only Nigeria that is yet to set up that commission. All what right. Nigeria has had over the last probably 12 years is a presidential committee on small arms and light weapons. Now, the challenge with that committee is that it doesn't have the mandate to sit in multilateral forums where issues around small arms and light weapons are being, being discussed. Now, if you consider that we are not the producers of the majority of these small arms and light weapons, especially the AK-47, apart from the local ones that are being fabricated, which, frankly, in terms of quantity, is nothing to uh, speak about. Now, um, we, since we can't fit in this multilateral uh, fora, we are unable to call to account the countries that produce these small arms and light weapons. So that is the challenge. Really, right. for I, I want to. Uh, I, I, I apologize. Uh, just before we wrap up, I want to, you know, also speak on the um, insurgent groups now. If you've seen some of the video clips that have um, been released from these groups, Boko Haram, and even some of the bandits, you would see some of some really, really high-powered and high-caliber weapons that I, I don't know if you know there's any um, information on whether they are produced locally or those are brought into the country through you know our porous borders um there is that and also the nigerian air force a few days ago um d dispelled reports that the fighter jet which has been declared missing was not shot down by you know boko haram as you know according to their claim um, but with the kind of weapons that we see in these clips, is it possible that, you know, those insurgent groups have even gotten to that level and have those level of, you know, um, weapons? Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, and I say this with all sense of responsibility, uh, in, in my discussions, I, I, I didn't even mention the terrorist groups, because frankly, it's already a known factor that uh, these groups have uh, military-grade weapons, They've got capabilities, unfortunately, for surface to air. Uh, in fact, the last one that shocked me, they've got um, guided uh, missiles. And uh, they did the video they released suggested the use of a guided missile, even though that video has been dispelled as doctored. Um, but the reality is that they've got this type of capabilities. Um, the source country for this type of capabilities has been named as Libya. 
Uh, and you know we can discuss this from the um, diplomatic level why Nigeria why Nigeria allowed what happened in Libya to happen why Nigeria allowed the proliferation of weapons through the Sahel um, gun running channels into Nigeria most of which uh, come through Niger um, for, unfortunately okay. um, so yes to answer your question directly these groups have the, the, that type of capability the other side of it is um, if I'm right the range of that um, particular fighter jet is about 700 meters. So what we don't know is whether these groups have any capability that would reach that range of 700 meters, or right. for some reasons that fighter jet descended low uh, before okay. they used um, one of the RPGs or whatever surface we had missile they had to shoot shoot it down. If at all, all that, right. that is what happened. Lastly, Mr. Adamu, you're the president, you're the advisor to the president of the Senate on security and intelligence. With these grim statistics we have here, how would you advise the presidency to tackle this? Do we need more laws or implementation of the ones we already have, like the Nigerian Firearms Act of 1990? Okay, um, now let me be very clear here. My appearance on your media is in my private capacity, it's not in my capacity as the advisor to the Senate president. So I don't want anything I say here to be attributed to that 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 rule. Um, now, uh, in response to your question, I'm aware that the ninth Senate, in fact, it started from the eighth Senate, has put forward a bill which is currently in, at its second reading for the establishment of that commission that I mentioned, the Commission for Small Arms and Light Weapons. Um, during the eighth Senate, the, the the law process reached a very advanced stage, but unfortunately, the, the way the laws are uh, passed in Nigeria, the moment one Senate you know, ends, then whatever law that has not been passed, the process will have to repeat itself um, from the beginning. So in this instance, uh, that uh, has started, and it was um, a law that, that was sponsored by Senator Smart Amadeemi from Kogi State. And um, so that, that more or less is the rule that is being placed by uh, the National Assembly. Uh, in terms of, um, you know, tackling this major challenge that we have. All right. Okay. Uh, Kabira Damu, uh, thank you very much in all your capacities for speaking with us this morning. Thank you. And uh, we, of course, look forward to having a conversation with you again. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, have a great all day. Right. Yeah, All bye. right, I started back there talking about illicit drugs, and that's because it's our next conversation. Stay with us.